Right, hello everybody. Welcome to the final of Blitz Pit, the grand final. It's a rematch of an earlier match. Um, this was going to be on the Blitz Pit channel, but they have had technical difficulties. Um, Rick is here. Is he? Hello, Rick. Hello. Glorious. Um, yeah. So this is it. This is the this is the big one. Um, so it's a rematch of the winners' final. Um, they both won the first three matches in a row. Then Dio lost. Oh, the yeah, the first three did they? Then Dio lost to Mankiz. Then he beat Core Knights, Kislev, and now he's back in the final. And uh, thank you for the massive raid, Blitz Pit. Um, <laughs> yes, it's it's here emergency stream. And hello, Rick. And how are you? Yeah, really good, thanks, mate. Like most of us, um, just had a fantastic weekend. Also bloody exhausted, like, <laughs> it's it's amazing. I, I don't know how the coaches do it to get to the final, um, but uh, even even just playing and doing the commentary and all the watching, like, everybody involved, it's a marathon for all of us, isn't it? And, and wonderfully so. Um, and and here, what a great match to, to end on here. We've got kind of what who I consider the coach in form. I've been saying this for a while in Mankis. He's obviously qualified for this tournament, uh, kicked ass throughout the tournament in the winner's bracket. He's gone deep in Chalice a couple of times, and he's smashing the ladder up this season as well. So just absolutely wonderful form from Mankis all around. And then the Blitz Pit go on the other side of the field. Uh, the only two-time winner, maybe about to go three-time winner and incredibly cement that if he does get the victory here, Dionysian. So yeah, in incredible matchup on paper. How did the first game go, Jim? I didn't catch that one. Um, Mankis absolutely diced the shit out of, <laughs> out of oh, Dio. Okay. It just annihilated him instantly. Um, I, now, in that match, Dio was very aggressive, and you've got to believe he's going to be very aggressive again here because this is like you can get right behind him here, can't he? You can go around both sides and envelop him, but maybe he's not. Maybe he's not going to go so uh, aggressive. Weird. I, I expected just balls to the wall completely here, but um, I would have, you know, taken down this guy and gone... Well, not I would have, I expected him to, anyway. Right, um, <laughs> so yeah, the, it, the, what happened in the first turn, Diode made a GFI, failed it, and cast his catcher on the turn one. <laughs> and then, well. and then uh, after that, Mankis just cast everybody. So... <laughs> Who's, whose team do you like here more on, on paper? Massive credit to Mankis for taking Orcs and, and doing so well with them because nobody saw that coming. But yeah, oh my goodness, what a, what a Kaz, just as I try and ask you this question. Oh my goodness, and it's stuck. Well, now... Well, that's a terrible, <laughs> terrible start. <laughs> thanks <laughs> thanks to you taking so long to ask that question on turn one. Um, I really like Dio's team because because Mankis has made a really bad team of only 10 Orcs. <laughs> <laughs> Strange decision to only take 10 orcs to Blitz Pit, but there you go, that's what he's done. <laughs> he didn't take two of the skills that were on offer for him either. <laughs> yeah, you know, he could have taken a block guard black orc and he just hasn't got that. <laughs> so... <laughs> oh man, wow. Well, uh, it doesn't look like it's going to be a repeat dicing uh, that you got to see a few hours ago, so that's good, you get to watch a, a different match this time, Jim. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I like both of the teams, to be fair. The thing with Mankis's team is it is brittle. Um, not so much against this, which it's happened. Um, but, you know, he's only got 11 players with an apple. You know, anyone could have taken Claw. So he, he could have been facing Claw Mighty of his own a fair amount. Um, so it was a bit brittle in that regard. And obviously just random random removals from any, any other team, you know. Like, it is a little bit... You know, I, I like having 12 players. Now, obviously, Wood Elves can get away with 11 because they can function with seven players on the field quite effectively. Orcs, down players, is a different animal, isn't it? So it, it was a, it's a little bit of a risky build. A very powerful build, though. You know, loads of guard, like absolutely loads of guard. How many? Three, four, five, six guarders. Um, the Mighty Blow Tackle for the Elves and Mighty Blow Claw for non-Elves. And then also the... Um, the tentacles so like you know it was a great team I thought I thought Mankis was actually a great build um, but yeah just a little bit risky with being orcs against like you know when anyone can take claw that was that was, and only 11 men that's what I thought I, I completely agree I think that's what's put everybody else off the teams that really rely on their armor 9 especially if you can't get much bench in uh, and he, maybe you know he could have countered the meta and got a load of wood elves and beaten them all but he's actually faced loads of teams that uh, that have the claw and he's still got through against them so credit to him I think he opened up against uh, PC's Dwarves, didn't he? Yeah, and, he did, uh, yeah. 
and it's it's worked out for him somehow. So uh, here we go. Can he do it one last time? I, I do like the the tentacles for this match. Really nice to be able to uh, slap that on, say that the wrestle dancer sometimes, and just stop the the leap sacks if you're worried about that. Yeah, and really? uh, in the last match, he, he got multiple times. He got it on like three players and stuff. You know, once you start to get ahead with this team, then uh, it's obviously really hard for the elves to deal with the uh, the you know the troll once they're down a few players. Oh my yeah. god, another another rave e break. Very nice, because obviously now that's got to, he's got to dedicate a player to go and help the troll. And the longer this goes on, uh, the the better chance later in the drive the Wood Elves are going to get at uh, at the sack attempts. They're going to have those re rolls. They're going to have their men, and they're going to have the orcs in a position where they get where they're pretty desperate to get forwards. Yeah. Do you know what? I, I wondered, <laughs> knowing that Dio's a bit of a mad genius, uh, as you can see from his profile picture, <laughs> well, uh, you know, a like player card picture, um, I wondered if he went so aggressive in the first match against Mankiz, like, you know, kind of confident that if it went wrong, he'd have a second crack at beating him. And, you know, maybe that would be in, in Mankiz's mind for the second match, you know, and then he could take a more, a more measured approach in the rematch. You know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't put that past uh, Dio having that kind of mindset. To be honest, not, not impossible, and, and maybe just a, a slight variation on that. He, he could certainly think, okay, well, last time I, I played aggressively, which I think was correct for that match, regardless. But now that he's expecting me to do that, I'll I'll do it differently. So so yeah, he could have retrospectively made the decision that you you just suggested as well. So so yeah, quite quite possibly. And now now he's got that removal on the on the black orc. He he absolutely can completely change his, his game style. It actually suits him, I think, to to take a yeah. more measured approach. So yeah, that is what I think we'll see. No success there from the uh, the mighty blow tackle either. Um, have we cast every finals together, Jim? Great to be here with you again, man. I feel like we have done for a long time, yeah. It's glorious. Yeah, I it? think we might have done all nine, which is, yeah, ab absolutely glorious. Yeah, great to be back here with you. Yes, wonderful. Wonderful to be back with you in your lovely <laughs> Jesus sick there. <laughs> <laughs> Despite the fact we've got absolutely no idea what we're going on about, they they keep having us back for some reason. So it's glorious, glorious, isn't it? <laughs> it's a great it's a great tournament. To be fair, thank you very much, Nick, for uh, for sorting it all out. Oh, so so entertaining, and uh, so so many people these days contribute as well. He's he's done a brilliant job of uh, getting other people involved as well behind the scenes. Yeah, it's been incredible. The Blitz Pit channel and everything is is fantastic. Yeah, that's the new one this time, isn't it? Absolutely brilliant addition, getting its own channel. I think that was a great idea. Yeah, and then Seguro with the uh, with the graphics, it's it's all fantastic. And the the intro video that I haven't been able to see yet because with the, you know with casting the matches as well, um, I'll have to watch the vods to see the the new intro video. I'm hyped to see that. Oh yeah, huge shout out to Volcagio for for that. He's done tons of work on on that and other things. Half of the new things have been his ideas, uh, working with Nick and uh, and he, he put a lot of time and effort into those. So massive massive shout out to Volcagio. Yes, thank you very much. Brilliant. <laughs> so what do you want to do here as the Orcs I, obviously you, you're a bit gutted um, that you've lost your Black Orc uh, you have chipped a Line Elf what, what's your plan here Jim um, hope that this troll isn't cast um, <laughs> <laughs> and then after that uh, yeah I don't know you've just got to steam in haven't you you've got to like steam in and base people up and, and hope to generate hits and and you know, get some attrition because if you've got equal numbers, you're not going to be able to punch through and score basically unless you unless you roll really well on the last turn. Um, so he's, yeah, I think that's what he, like he is basing now. He's got to base up, but then of course, if you base up, you leave the ball a little bit exposed. Like it, you can't do both, right? With only ten players, you can't force the action nope. forward and keep the ball a hundred percent safe. So it's going not to be very risky. effectively. We saw an amazing effort. I, I might have watched this one with you. I can't remember last Blitz Pit. There was a there was a Kemri team with two block guard tomb guardians and two guard stand firms, and they looked like they were in a bit of trouble against the elves. And then they just used the stand firms and the blocks on the tomb guardians, and the elves couldn't hit them away and actually based up their cage as they advanced. Um, yeah. But obviously they they had that extra strength and the skills to do that. Yeah. Whereas the orcs really have it. They work it out here. Yeah, they really do. Uh. Mr. Blitz Pit. Oh, Jim's getting uh, taken off behind the uh, the shed for a second with Nick. So we see lots and lots of guard in the in the cage. The orcs keeping it safe at the moment. 
still got a few turns to try and chip away, haven't they? Don't get the pow. Have three rerolls. He's thinking about rerolling it. I wouldn't hate that at all. He chooses not to, which is which is also fair enough. I think that was uh, an either or. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> You having an alright time with Nick there, Jim? Everything okay? Yeah. I'm yes. suddenly getting a uh, first hand experience of what it's like to be Scuramezzo. <laughs> yeah, sorry, it's <laughs> tricky, isn't it? No, but, no, you know, totally, totally. This wasn't fine. prepared, that was the thing, you know, this was an emergency broadcast due to uh due to it the was. frames getting eaten by snakes in <laughs> in Australia. <laughs> 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 This is Another the grand final. Victim of Nuffle and his snakes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> the good old yep. <laughs> oh, best emote in Twitch. So uh, the uh, the elves just uh, making sure that the uh, the orcs can't come wide easily and taking down the troll. At least the troll has regen. He's the safest orc player on the team. He gets wrestled down, so that's tentacles dealt with, and he can uh, disengage now if he wants to from the Black Orc, or he can take a one dice. Two dice him, can't he? He'll move this guy around. Uh, yeah, if he, yeah, if he's prepared to commit an elf um, round this side, then yes, he can make it to. Yeah, and there's still no way to prove forward, is there? It doesn't matter that you're kind of moving him out of position from in the front, because he's, he's got that covered. He's got enough elves for all of it. Yeah, okay. he's, he's he, doesn't, not he so. doesn't think that's worth it. He goes for the one without block. The, the 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 bad thing about that was, I think the bigger thing was, if he pushed him, he'd still be in contact and giving up a hit, wouldn't he? Whereas yeah, this way, yeah. he Mighty gets blow. him free. And it's always nice to tag the down players as well. He's he's got a guy on that line orc now, so he's completely stuck where he is. Yep. Yeah, turn five, he's got to get moving. And and how do you do it? How do you do it when you when you're not up men? It's it's hard, isn't it? Like. You can do it against a really bad player, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. is not a really good, bad player. He's a really good player, so this is this is really hard now. I, I think I'm already thinking about um, by turn the start of turn seven to the end of turn six, just having some central space just inside his half as as my like worst case scenario position, and then peeling some of my black orcs and if I've got any free line orcs uh, away to the sides, having the ball cage with guard. And, and then just looking for a handoff play turn eight. It's it's pretty desperate, but it's your yeah, it's your last line when you end up in these situations against uh, elf screens. Yeah, it's really rough, isn't it? Right. It's what? nicer on teams like Undead where your your ghouls have dodge uh, and they're a little bit quicker, but uh, any sometimes any team has to do it. Yeah, it's, it's rough. Like it's rough. It's really hard because obviously that that that's the thing. Yeah, if if you start piling and try and create the forward movement, then you can leave the ball exposed, can't you? So you've got to you've got to. It's really hard to get that balance, isn't it, of the pushing forward and even like the decoys you say that you, that that could become a handoff threat. Even that's taken away from the protection and the screening and everything. So it's it's really yeah. tricky to uh, to get up there. It is. And the one worst thing of not scoring, of course, is uh, is is going one nil down in your own drive because that's just game over. Um, if it's nil nil, you're not happy, but you've still got a chance in the second half. Uh, you can force them to score early and take it to overtime, or you can even uh, manage if you're very fortunate to get uh, a turnover yourself and, and win it. But but one nil is just so so bad um, if you give the ball away to the elves. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, it's it like that's what makes it so tough, isn't it? That's the that's the thing. Lovely use of horns there, getting a two D. Yeah, really nice. Um, I, yeah, I, I really love that uh, that dancer. Pretty great. I mean, it is incredible. Like horns is like so good, isn't it? On a dancer, it's it's ridiculous. Oh, it's, it's essentially a straightforward dancer, isn't it? But, you know. Yeah, basically. pretty 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 obscene. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, I think it probably was the meta pick going wood elves this blitz bit. I was looking at it myself. In the end, I decided to try and build like a bit of an anti wood elf Kislev team. But yeah, I, I think great, great uh, race pick and build from Dionysian. Yeah, I th like my initial thoughts were like dark elves and undead, and then actually, once I thought about it more, I thought, well, what do undead really get? Like, if you, if you want to use, you know, you could cover tentacles, mummy, and like 
if you if you want to build a claw white, then you don't then you don't get guard on on one of your whites, you know. So you can have a mighty blow tackle white and a mighty blow claw white, but then you don't have guard there. And so yeah, that you know, that was the uh, the surprising thing when doing the builds. I think a lot of us found was that um, sometimes races that you thought might be good didn't actually make best use of the mutations, or if they did, like you've just said, it was in place of something else that you really wanted. So so the races in the end, well, the, the race really, that, that could use them best without it costing them was, was what else. Yeah, just because yeah. dancers start so ridiculously good with Blodge Leap, right? You can, you're can you not missing anything by putting a mutation on them. Uh. Yeah, just, I mean, and stacking as well, like stacking dancers is, is glorious, isn't it? Um, oh, you've got to, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Man, he's, he's not catching a break on this armor, is he? Gets the power there. Doesn't break armor seven again. One elf removed. Yeah. But he's using these strength four black orcs to get in as the uh, things. Or two, two, sorry. But yeah, it's, uh, it's not half as many as he'd have liked at this stage. It's plenty of elves to still hold up the orcs. Yeah, maybe Shawnee, yeah. But I mean, I mean, they, they to me were the obvious ones were, were Undead and Woodies. And then, you know, maybe Dark Elves as well. There was only one Dark Elf team, wasn't there? Which is surprising. Because, uh, you know, they could get horns and two heads. Like, that that seems pretty good, doesn't it? For the elfy type teams getting horns and two heads. Whereas Bashy teams would get tentacles and claw, basically. Like, that seems pretty obvious to me that they would be the kind of obvious things. And then Undead are stuck with... Undead probably do go the the the, uh, the edge route and go horns and and two heads, which is I think what Shawnee took. Um, so it's tricky, isn't it? It's, it is tricky to like know which one to go for. But I don't think it's worth trying to counter pick, as you say there, Rick. Um, I think you should just go for the best team <laughs> rather than yeah. an answer to the best team. In, in you know, I, I learned the hardware and magic that that's pretty much what you should. What <laughs> yeah, you, should you, you can end up in an infinite loop, can't you? Of like, well, p people are going to want to pick this, so then actually they might end up picking this to counter it, and and you know, you ju you just end up second guessing yourself way too much, and yeah, just just go with the the, the immediately obvious meta if, if you can. Yeah. So work out what that is, <laughs> do it. And and blitz pit as well. Also, what you're comfortable with as well. Like you know, PC. I would always bet on PC going dwarves. Just because that's that's by far what he's most comfortable with, isn't it? And and that's what I think he should go with, um, all things being equal. Just because he's going to be better in that limited time time frame. Oh, I, I completely agree. Yeah, if if you main something fantastically well, like like PC with dwarves, then yeah, definitely take those. Yeah, he, yeah. he's he's always a threat, no matter what the meta. Um, yeah. And and many many coaches as well playing to their strength like that is is definitely the correct decision. Yeah, and, and not to mention uh, just Joe, <laughs> not, not, nothing to do with just Joe, but I would have pegged uh, Wolfpack to take wood, uh, Undead, you know, because he's like so comfortable with Undead. I would have, th yeah. I would have thought Shawnee would have Undead as well. Like th those, t those two, I would have, I was sure would have gone Undead, and I was sure PC would have gone Dwarves. Yeah, I, exactly. I pegged Wolfpack for Undead. I actually had Shawnee down as Wood Elves because I thought it was a Wood Elf meta, and because Shawnee smashed it on the ladder with Wood Elves this season, I actually thought he'd uh, he'd switch to Wood Elves. But yeah. Stuck with what he knew, fair enough, and, and did do really well. Yeah. <laughs> Why is everyone pegging off that? <laughs> 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 well, that's a, that's a nice uh, that's a nice technical to three players, but it's not getting him forward movement, is it? Um, and that's where his problem lies now. And the Wood Elves doing a pretty good job of uh, removing the troll every time when required as well. And I kind of would like to see Stand Firm on it with the tentacles. I, I can absolutely see why he's gone with the guard. And, and in some games, that's, I'm sure, paid off. But uh, Stand Firm tentacles would, would have given the Wood Elves, you know, on the turns where they don't get the pow, they'd, uh, they'd have a bit of a problem. Yep, that's true. That's true. Stand Firm would help. It would help in a lot of matches, but, you know, guard helps in a lot of matchups as well, isn't it? So it's one of those where... Which one do you think you're going to need the help more against, I guess? Oh, wow, there's a death. And yeah. Dios used his apple, didn't he? Yeah, we didn't mention it, but he did use an apple on a, on a badly hurt catcher. Um, he did, yeah, which I think was absolutely the, the correct apothecary. But yeah, it does mean he's yeah. now lost a block kick catcher, which is not insignificant. Yeah, the first really nice breakthrough for the orcs there. Um, it, unless the elves find a snake really early, I don't think it's going to be enough uh, to give the orcs a decent chance to score. I think we'll see one last really effective uh, elf screen 
and the Orcs really struggle to get through it next turn. But um, even if they do go in at 0-0 now, that's going to boil them quite a bit getting that catcher out. Yeah. The other thing against Wood Elves is sometimes like you manage to succeed your score and then they just one-turn you anyway, right? They're, they're so good at one-turning. Yep. So now he, he's left the hole for the uh, for the Horns 2D, hasn't he? So it's whether... It's whether Dior thinks the two he the uh, the two D is worth it or not, basically. And, and talking of, is it worth it? Do you oh, can threat the uh, the wrestle lineman here? Yeah, maybe. Asking a lot, though, isn't it? You'd have to it it really comes down to if you've got enough men for this screen, and maybe you are one short. That is a shame. Maybe he is one short here to, to use the wrestle as a Knorian threat with three removed. The wrestler could come back as well to block off the assists there if he goes for this, but I guess you're just trying to dodge away from the troll, or you blitz the troll. Uh, yeah, he could come in and blitz the troll, couldn't he? And then that gets everyone free. Yeah, maybe that's what he does. Maybe he blitzes the troll here. Yeah, I, I think you've got to, absolutely. The tentacles is doing too much work right now. And then you get eight men back for a, an eight-man elf screen, which is why I think he's, he's sadly one man short to have a, a scoring threat. Yeah. yeah, he gets the push. Huge push. And I guess he's, uh, I guess he's happy with the elf screen. I mean, it's not that hard, is it? Four, four, three. Like that's why I don't really like like the passive elf screen. It's easy and it, it's all right, but it's. Uh, you know, four four three isn't that difficult, is it? It's doable, but you're expected to score your drive, aren't you? And and there's a good chance that you don't manage that. Oh, we do get the canoring threat. He he Cheeky. works it. I like how he's done this actually. He's broken from the uh, the straightforward eight man and staggered this a bit to make it uh, just as difficult to get through with seven. Yeah, really nice from Dio. Yeah, that's good, isn't it? Yeah, there you go, fighting with a quick maths. Like, that's pretty high odds, isn't it? Like, it, it's okay as your default thing if, you know, if you haven't managed to find anything better, but I think you definitely want to find something better, don't you? You know, like, that's the thing, right? You want to find something better. Though, as the defender against a world-class coach, I'm, I'm pretty happy that I've got 61% that I'm going to successfully defend. Yeah, and now he might be 1-0. That could be game. Unbelievable. Yeah, if this if this pass comes off, this could be game over. Incredible. Yeah, yeah. as as Shawnee says, surprise just went for it. I mean, because the failure state is so bad, isn't it? Oh fantastic start though for Mankiz with the one on the pickup. Yep. He makes the handoff. Does he have to cut the corner here? He'll be frantically checking his uh his pass. <laughs> Meter. <laughs> yeah, I think he does, yeah. He does do it. And then it's a three plus from there. He's made the pass. He's made the catch. Well. Is it one GFI? He makes it. Is, it is, but he's made it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Huge. Wow. <laughs> Ooh la la, I don't want to say GG, but that was something, wasn't it? That was... Uh... Well, I, I know that if you are the Orcs, you are typing GG into the chat right now, Jim. Let's let's be honest. That's that's <laughs> the first thing happening <laughs> from your book of plays. Oh, I would have probably been at turn one after the uh, Black Orc got injured. <laughs> I, I got uh, BLGF'd and early GG'd from store yesterday, Jim. Yeah. Nice! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nice. Stor's got some good BM game on him. I, I, he has? Yeah. <laughs> I, no, I noticed he, uh, when he played somebody else, uh, he said, I'm due to die somebody, I hope it's you. <laughs> <laughs> that was me as well. Fantastic. Yeah, got wrecked on the banter by Stor yesterday. <laughs> Definitely holding you accountable for that, Jim. <laughs> hey, you've got to use any tool available to you when you're coaching halflings, haven't you? <laughs> oh. I, for I forgot to reply muted. That's that's the uh, oh, that's, that's the appropriate the... response, isn't it? Yeah. It is. Yeah, you've got to get the mute in. I mean, you've got to stick to your mute as well. Early mute and stick to it is is Elliot's play. Now, while that gets him parity, it doesn't get him ahead, does it? That's the thing. So. 
you know, Elliot really has to step step up his chat game because you know he, he needs to do better than just existing in chat. <laughs> he needs to dominate a chat as well. <laughs> it is it, it is a good eighty percent of uh, of what decides a blood ball game. I think so. Yeah, def definitely something to to work on. Uh, chat getting really excited for a classic Dakar here. Uh, I think they might be right. We might see it, but it also it, it absolutely can give the Orcs a chance. Dakers can backfire, can get you trapped, and uh, can yeah. can end up getting you turned over. So not impossible that we could see a Dio win result in overtime. Yep, we've seen Dio. Um, we've seen Dio like on this channel. We've seen Dakar. We've seen him Dakar twice, and both have been very ugly. <laughs> and the, I think he got away with both of them, but they were both very very ugly. Uh, and I I caught. Um, Baza versus Regor's overtime because I was due to play the winner, and uh, and Baza won the coin toss with the Dark Elves and Dakard in overtime, and uh, and sure enough got caught, got turned over, and uh, and Regor got through. So yeah, it, oh, it yeah. really can happen. Yeah, I saw that. I thought I thought you had to uphill blitz with a with a blitzer in that game. I think yeah. you, you could have uphill blitzed a Tomb Guardian, and it would have been devastating. He just needed a push. I think that was a. I think that was a big mistake from Bazaar there, to be honest. No, no offense, Bazaar. Obviously, he's a great player, but I think that was that that was so good if he'd done that. Yeah. All right, nothing silly off the uh, off the kickoff events. Obviously, something like a blitz could have made this uh, really, really game on again. But yeah, pretty pretty fair. I mean, kind of one of the the strengths of the Dakka is resilience against a blitz, isn't it? Because if you you know if you're already setting up like you can just set up completely anti blitz. You don't need to care about you know somebody you know hit, making blocks on the LOS and you know where your blitz is going to be and <laughs> who's going to pick up the ball because everyone's just can just be there to stop the blitz <laughs> and then pull them all back. Yeah, absolutely true. So what what's your plan here as the orgs, Jim? You, you're in a desperate spot. You, you're you're hardly up men even. Uh, you, you're not. You're ten on ten. What, what are you doing? What are you thinking? What's your strategy? Oh, I'm thinking, what a complete waste of time, little children's game. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, my strategy is probably just go really hard on the uh, on the chat here, you know, really try to be um, dial. <laughs> You've got to break him mentally because <laughs> you're not going to do anything good on the pitch. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know, it's tough, you know, it's tough because obviously Dio can break at any point and score, he doesn't have to stall eight turns. He, the fact he can st score at any point means that, like, normally, you know, if you're daiquiring, um, like, if it was nil-nil, um, then he would, he's, you know, he's kind of got to stall till turn eight, but the fact he can go early now as well is means yeah. you've really got to hold your shape and really not let him go anywhere. It's really, 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 really Oh, wow, there you go. Get a removal, that's a good one. Go for yeah, the kills. Um, he, he will be pleased, I think, but he did cost him a reroll, so a little bit of a mixed bag. Yeah. Just yeah, try to get the troll into good places. Thing. Try to get the troll into good places is important, isn't it? Yeah, with the, with the tentacles tying down what you can, yeah, that's really, really key. Yeah, we do see a nice spread from the orcs here, so the elves can't uh, break away too easily. He does have that horn, though, doesn't he? So he can. He's got a horny stripper that can go wherever <laughs> he it wants. <laughs> yeah, and, and yeah, so he, if he does get a power on the Mighty Blow Claw, he's got a bit of space over there that he can go and take. And Orcs aren't the quickest, that's going to strand some of them off to the right. Yeah, I quite like that move. You can even just leave that line elf deliberately on the troll, and it's a it's a fairly nice trade for you as the elves. Yeah, you could even double, double him so he can't chain it, or he's got to work harder to chain it. And like you no, know, he blitz it free. Like sorry, I, I didn't make any sense, did it? Um, he he could blitz free this. He, if you leave the one man on him, he could blitz him free. Whereas if you put a second player on him, then he'd have to chain somehow. And he, this this lineman could go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then you're tagging from two corners, and then it's really hard to uh, free up the troll. So he, he might he might put a second a second yeah. liner on the troll just to make sure he uh, gets stuck. Are you ever thinking about uh, like a six plus dodge in for a sack here? You could even do it with a black orc for a two dice. Are you trying to take it, or are you still trying to take a more conservative route than that? I wouldn't want to, but now that you mention it, it could be the best play, couldn't it? it, it like, it's really desperate. It's not horrific in such a terrible situation, is it, to, to give it a go? 
<laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Like, Mankis has to realize how desperate the situation is, isn't it? You know, like he's he's been turned over on his own offense. Dyer's got this. Yeah, so he's he's gone for two here, but adjacent, which means they can he can chain out the troll if he wants. Um, so What's I'm, the benefit of double tagging the troll? Oh, you can't blitz him free. Yeah, yeah. okay. But he, he can chain him free at the moment. Yeah, yeah. So that I, is then prefer... that is using your blitz and you're not using it over near the ball. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a little bit swings and roundabouts. Yeah, I, I did prefer one to the right though, so he couldn't you know just to deny him the option of that. But um... yeah, true. Yeah, very true. I suppose the troll could blitz himself out if he got a pow if the if you split the players. True, true. That's a good point as well. Yeah, good point. It does yeah. seem like a rough best case, exactly what I call this, but this is a really horrible situation now, isn't it? So it's it's really desperate. It really, I like you can't emphasize how desperate the situation is for man kids. You know, one nil down, <laughs> wood elves that can score any turn are are insanely powerful. You know, the only thing really holding back elves a lot of the time is the f the fact that they feel they need to stall it till turn uh, turn eight of the drive, don't they? And when you just let them score whenever when they can score whenever they want, they're just incredible. When you're looking at your small, when you're looking at your small chances to win, like your really small chances, like I think unfortunately the orcs are, um, at least if they can uh, keep up with the elves and force them in, they can then obviously try and do a two or three turn and, and realistically roll blitz. Right, like every chance you get to roll blitz uh, is is a small added bonus of a chance to to get yourself back in the game. That's true. Yeah. Slivers of equity, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nicely put, nicely put. It, it certainly is. That's that's going right in the uh, in the key phrases for casting. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a lot of two pluses here, but he's got a dodge. Got two dodges. You can make a full cage up here. We had an epic phrase from uh, from Elliot pulled out yesterday of dilly dallying. So if we can if we can squeeze that in at all, Jim, we can. Oh, yes. uh, yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd love to get a little dilly dally in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think the black oak was necessary. Uh, it, it, I guess he doesn't want to just let him one d the troll away. Like getting the one d. Like I still kind of you know like I would st I still don't mind the uphill <laughs> uh, on the troll at the end of the turn to then get this guy through. Um, Whereas if he'd let him 1D in, it would have been super easy, wouldn't it? And he's got this two heads around, so he's getting loads of people through here. This is a great cage now. Great cage for Dino. The thing with the Black Orc is that he's he's going to get outstripped for pace on this race anyway, so he's going to be out of the play in a second. So it's yeah. it's not the worst thing to do a 3 for 2 trade um, player-wise yeah. and have a slight man advantage where it matters as the Orcs. But I mean, the main thing, I think the main thing was also this, this you know, if he... Oh, he's double one. No, no, it's no, tackle. It hasn't. It's tackle. Oh, oh, it's tackle. Unbelievable, Jeff. Uh, still nice, you know, it, it's not much, is it? And two rerolls is still fine, but, uh, you know, just a little something for the Orcs. This is a huge two a, plus now to, to cover this up. He gets it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that could have failed. Oh, so he dodged. I, I really like one uphilling him there, honestly. I really liked uphilling him, and then that gives you the two plus dodge out with the other guy. I really like the uphill. Yeah. But yeah, this is looking real bad now, isn't it? Now. <laughs> well, now what do you do? It's just disgusting, isn't it? They've got they've got past you. They turned the corner, and that, and that was the problem that. That man kids had, you know, like you, you ha he had to keep it there's wide. A, there's a four plus, three plus, one dice on the ball. Then that's what he's gone for, and he's putting a reroll in as well. Yeah, a little unfortunate. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was probably the best play. <laughs> four plus, <laughs> three plus. <laughs> One D with tackle. You know the levels of reluctance that were in your voice then to declare that as the best play, Jim. It was unbelievable, man. <laughs> it was just, it was just the, the tragedy of it, really. Rather. Yeah, fair, totally fair. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, yeah, and even gets to stall out a bit longer because obviously, if you're going to be two 0 up, you'd rather they have less turns because, as you say, blitzes do happen. Yeah, and leaving the double dodge isn't isn't too rough, is it? No. And obviously, the the stunned the stun tackle means that it's it's not an issue at all now. Like they've really got to get lucky to do anything against you now. And. Uh... <laughs> yeah, honestly, I would have GG turn one after that block no. harder. <laughs> <laughs> on offense, on defense, it wouldn't be so bad, but on, it just kind of destroyed his offense. Like that's such a linchpin, isn't it? Strength four block harder, and you know he, he was—he's been even bashing throughout the whole game, essentially, which is just not what you like. You, it's just what you do with. That's kind of what I don't like about orcs, and you know, in, in NAF style things, is if you lose the bash war. You don't have a lot open to you to outplay somebody. You know, like it's hard enough to outplay Dio anyway at the best of times, but once you get out of bash, what is your route in? You know, it's hard to even get lucky. <laughs> Never mind play, yeah. play better. I think that's why they're not popular, because on, on paper, you, you'd think they've got kind of everything you need. The blitzers are really nice out of the box. They get a ton of guards. They've got high armor. They're, they're quite cost effective. You know, orcs tend to start quite well. So why aren't they good in that format? And I think you just hit the nail on the head, really. They yeah. just don't have the the playstyle options to adapt to different game states. They've got Plan A, and then they, and then that's that's it. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I just don't think it matters, kill. I think you you go for the play, and if it works, it works. And if it doesn't, well, you'll lose anyway. Oh, there you go. That's a double one. The glorious yep. animation of the uh, <laughs> of the uh, Hulk <laughs> fail. Um, fair play. He's rolled the dice. What what else can you ask of Mankiz in such a terrible spot? He, he's seen something he thinks gives him a tiny chance, a, a sliver of equity. <laughs> <laughs> and now we've got Dio just dilly dallying at the end zone. <laughs> oh, five out of five, Jim. Top, top casting, sir. Top casting. <laughs> <laughs> this is slightly loose. It's not guaranteed that he's going to. Uh, no, it is it is slightly world. loose. You're right, but I mean, it's the odds are so stacked against uh, Mankis, aren't they? You know, yeah. he's got out of rerolls. He'd have to dodge in one dice of dodger. Then if he knocks it out, he's got to make several dodges to get in to recover. Like it, you know, he's one nil down, so it's yeah. He's got a. I, and he did something. get the two heads, and it's a uh, nice use of the two heads as well. It wasn't as pinned as I thought. It being the two heads catcher, that's uh, yeah, it's come over and shored it up even more. You never know. If you get the one dice on the ball, Dio could misclick wrestle. He could, yeah. He could. Yeah, as Cookie, 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 Cookie Cooper is saying, I do like that. Um, I do like that. Yeah, Chaos has a lot of like uh, desperation. Like desperation plays much better than Orcs. You know, move six everywhere. Like move five slowest player is 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 not bad, is it? And add three on everyone. Um, yeah. and strength four and everyone so like chaos desperation plays are, are pretty nice um, orc desperation players are pretty terrible now obviously they're less likely to need those desperation players but when they do need them it's it's really it's really bad <laughs> sure is it sure is and and Mankiz is running out of time now even if he forces him in now um, he's, he's literally got two turns to score back and then needs the blitz yeah. to give himself any chance of the 2-2 two -two, and that's without any re-rolls doesn't get a power on the blitz either yeah. I think Dio can pretty comfortably put this in at, at some point the slight risk of stalling outweighs the slight risk of your opponent scoring two touchdowns against you that's true but I think the, ta that's... the tackle can't hit so I fancy Dio had stolen another turn here What is hard is to change your strategy sometimes. Like, you get really stuck with your strategy in your head, don't you? Like, stalling is working, it's good, let's keep stalling. It's yeah. so, some of the hardest things is to change gear. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised to see the stall, but if anybody can change gear, it is Dio. Yeah, I, I think he'll and stall another turn. The fact that he's safe from the tackle. I, I think he's taken so long because he's, he's weighing it up and he's deciding to score, actually. Maybe. Maybe. He's, there's only yeah yeah you're right. I mean I think either way was fine. 
<laughs> Do you know what I mean? Oh, oh my goodness, yeah. <laughs> we don't like to say it's Castus because we're trying to make this interesting, but he's won, hasn't he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, <so. laughs> he's won. Whether he stalls, <laughs> he's yeah. won. If he, sc if he scores, he's won. Um, it Nothing doesn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> oh. but yeah, a riot and a two-turn. And then yeah, another it, riot or a blitz. There's a chance, but um... this is this is where I strongly oppose uh, people building orcs without a goblin, right? Because your your sliver, slivers of equity are so much more <laughs> if uh, if you've got a goblin right now. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Tossing a goblin, and then all of a sudden he's still got no chance. But at least he'd think he had a chance. <laughs> 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 I, I think you're right, sick as eggs, yeah, you know, Skuro's, Skuro hasn't stopped talking about the regular picture, but my god, that Dio, that Dio picture just sent out a message, it sent out a message <laughs> to the rest of the field, and they were not ready to handle Dio. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few fantastic ones, isn't there? I mean, obviously the JFW ones are so good as well, and I'm loving our casting pictures, talking of which. But uh, but yeah, there's some really phenomenal badges, and a massive shout out to Skuramezo as well. What a great job he's done there. Yep, fantastic. <laughs> it has been double elimination, yes, Joel. Uh, Mankiz has already beaten Dio. But Dio has got a second chance and has come back for a rematch in the finals. And what a performance. Yeah, it's, it's a slightly debated thing when you first hear about double elimination, that somebody can lose with just one elimination when they've made the grand final. But when you weigh up that they've, they've played a lot less Blood Bowl uh, as a reward to get there, uh, I, think, I think it does balance out. Yeah. Also, as a slight thing, um, they if it's still the case, it certainly was in early blitz pits, they get the choice of whether they want to uh, kick or receive in the in the first half. Yeah. And he received, didn't he? Man he did. Interesting. Out of it, it might be more to do with his own game than, uh, than particularly thinking about the Wood Elves, because some people think, I'm going to have to use my rerolls on offense. You know, if, if, if dice go badly on offense, you have to reroll or you lose the ball. Whereas on defense, you can be a little bit more passive and just basically take your rerolls to overtime. So I, I can see the logic of, uh, of doing that. But yeah, very risky against the Wood Elf. Yeah. I used to be of the opinion that I would always kick. Um, but to be fair, Art said he would have received against KFOG's team, and I can see the point. Um, and the reason, the reason to receive is to thin the herd a bit. And then... Um, you know, worst case scenario, or probably likely scenario, you, you're drawing at half time. And then in the second half, um, you know, hopefully you've reduced them to the, like seven seven players or something, and now you've actually got a much better chance of turning them over. And I, I've never really considered that point of view. I've always thought of like the kind of standard one of if you kick, um, then you've got 15 turns to, to reduce the odds of the one turn, and, or, you know, that sort of thing. But, um, it's interesting, yeah, I mean, you know. I'm not a massive fan of that logic for two reasons. One, yes, you get the turn one LOS hits, but the other way around, you get turn eight and nine LOS hits. And yeah. secondly, you read the third for defense in the second half if you go offense first, when defense is less important normally. Whereas the other way around, on defense, you can try and thin the herd for your offense in the second half, which is far more important. You need to get yep. the elves down in numbers to get through. It's more difficult as the bash team, and it makes the elf screening much more difficult. So. Uh, so I, I still I still like it the other way first. I, I, I like kicking a lot more because I think the, the elves have the uncertainty at that point. Like as orcs or any bash team, you have to score on turn eight. There, there's no there's no, there's nothing to it. And and basically whatever happens, you're going to have to try and score on turn eight because you just you know if you try if you have to score on turn four and turn them over, you're just not going to do it. You know pretty much. So you pretty much have to score on turn eight. Whereas the elves. If 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 they've turned you over and they're one 0 up, they know they can score at any time to kill the game. But if if that had been the first half, Dio doesn't know he's turned over Mankis and would be one 0 up. So now he's yep. got to try and stall it out, hasn't he? So fantastic point, fantastic point, wholeheartedly agree. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're welcome. I, I know that you uh, you live for my uh, you know clarification of your your, your points, Jim. So you so yeah, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> 
yeah. yeah, I think that I think that, that the big thing for me is yeah, with the L's the uncertainty basically, and and I think that's why that's one of the reasons why um, you know why the Inarian strategy is is so effective a lot of the time because he takes that pressure off his his offense, you know. Yeah, um, absolutely. Oh wow, there's a death there. That's really gonna hurt uh, Dio as he cracks open the champagne. <laughs> <laughs> and celebrate his inevitable <laughs> blitz pit win. Hare Krishna is ringing through the Welsh Valleys tonight, I can tell you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, and that's officially GG. Just just so we, we note the point where it is now definitely over. Yep. That GFI fail ends the game. Yeah, wow. Three time champ of Blitz Pit, the absolute undisputed king of Blitz Pit, isn't he? Uh, Bloody Dan impressive. Is Bloody impressive, isn't it? That is incredible. Just born for this format. That is really incredible, yeah. Yes. And I was saying in, in, in one of my other earlier casts, the, the irony is that in the build up to Blitz Pit 1, we were all taking the, the mick out of Dio because he, he used to struggle a little bit with the two minute turns in Chalice. <laughs> <laughs> we, we used to say how bad he'd be at Blitz Pit. And then he came in and just smashed everybody. <laughs> so, uh, what do you know? Incredible, isn't it? I mean, he's a hell of a. He's a hell of a coach, isn't he? Like we he just know. is a great coach, yeah. You know, he's great at tabletop. He's, he's won Chalice. Um, he, he won Dome, which admittedly is his own tournament. <laughs> but, but, yeah. it, but it was a different format again with very, very good coaches. Um, and, and now he's won this. Yeah, he's, he is just a fantastic coach. I mean, he's, he's almost certainly the uh, coach of the strongest mental game, isn't he? Um, yeah, that's it, definitely. You, you watch him on ladder and you, you watch him on the mentals. You know, they're great. But compared to the very best, like maybe a K-Fool's fundamentals, and you're, you're not going to like me saying this, Jim, but like your fundamentals are absolutely top. I love watching you for them. He maybe isn't quite that level on that, but his mental game and his pre-tournament as well as in-tournament is unbelievable. He's just absolutely yeah. untouchable on that front. Yeah, I think so. The, the me his meta, uh, you know, analysis and prediction and everything is is just is top. I think he probably, you know, he's got, uh, yeah, as you say, like, Probably like the best of all the things that aren't Blood Bowl, <laughs> if you know what I mean. All the yeah, things that yeah. aren't like you know the physically uh, moving the pieces and rolling the dice, even though you don't do that in in in, in the computer game. But you know what I mean. Like every, every action outside of the actual games, I think he is the best at. Pretty much understood. Yeah. I would I would think honestly that's that's my opinion. I think he's Completely he's the best agree, at everything yeah. outside of the games. Um, which, when it comes to inside the games, I think there's a lot of contention between who would be the best, you know, between loads of players, um, you know. Yeah, and yeah. And he seems the, the strongest outside of the games, and, you know, when he comes to these grueling tournaments like Blitz Pit and Dome, he just he just wins. He always wins. He's incredible, isn't he? So. <laughs> it's so, I mean, it is incredible how often he wins them. Absolutely yeah. amazing. Massive congratulations to him. And, uh, I, yeah, I guess it's that time to say a, a huge, huge thank you all the coaches, all the sponsors, all the casters, Gdanik, um, all the people behind the scenes like BZL. Um, Jeremy's done it before. I am sorry. I don't know if he did it uh, this time. Um, Volcagio, like I said. Elliot and Dimmy, a fantastic addition as like the, the front guys um, this time as well. All you guys viewing, this this would be such a like, it would be a non-event if you guys didn't turn up and watch and cheer on. Uh, and get involved, you know, ride along the emotional roller coaster with us all. So massive thank you to everybody that turns up in chat and and watches. So yeah, absolutely stunning from from everybody. Great job. Thank you to you as well, Vic. By the way, and Jimmy, fantastic cast, both of you. Uh, can I just add a, a couple of names? I don't know if you, yeah, I might have missed you saying them, uh, but Volcajo, I think you did say behind the work, uh, behind the scenes, loads of work from Volcajo, fantastic stuff. Uh, Hellboy, along with BZL. Uh, as well for the admining. Uh, Tar Myron has made the Blitz Pit channel emotes, so thank you very much for those fantastic emotes. Uh, Duthan has made uh, blitzpit.com, the new Blitz Pit website, so thank you very much, Duthan. Uh, the CCL admins uh, adding mutations, uh, and then, as you said, the sponsors, and, of course, all the coaches and everybody who's played in the tournament. Fantastic stuff. Yeah, it's been totally awesome. Hello, guys. Uh, it's been totally awesome. Congratulations, Dio. Massive win. Commiserations, man, kids. Uh, it's great having you all here. Thank you, Jimmy. Uh, thank you, Rick. That was a really fun cast. Really enjoyed it, guys. And uh, I, I guess to finish things off, Jimmy, do you have time to sing a goodbye song before we go? Yeah. Just, just a quick one. <laughs> all right. 
<laughs> um, oh, God. I'm sorry. You've got to bear with me. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> that, that, that is pun. <laughs> yep. <laughs> right. Here we go, guys. Hey, this was really fun. We hope you liked it too. Seems like we've just begun when suddenly we're through. Goodbye, goodbye, good friends, goodbye. Cause now it's time to go. But hey, I say, well that's okay. Cause we'll see you very soon, I know. Very soon, I know. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye good friends, goodbye. goodbye. And tomorrow, just like today. Hell, you're done, dear man. The Blissfield House will be waiting for you to come and play. To come and play. To come and play. To come.